Hi there, it's Debbie Sanna, and as this year's Oscar ceremony is right behind the corner, today we'll be taking a look at the nominees and who might take home the award. Today's category is Best Directors. The first nominee is Spike Lee for his comedy drama Black Klansman, covering the true story of a group of policemen infiltrating the Ku Klux Klan, but while also representing everything that the KKK hates. Despite Spike Lee being one of the biggest and most recognisable names in the cinema industry, with over 30 years of work as a director and a portfolio of dozens of films, he never actually won the Academy Award, but he now has high chances with Black Klansman with an engaging and thought-provoking plot which narrates a story set in the 70s, but which covers themes that still resonate with audiences today. A big competitor to Spike Lee is Adam McKay, widely known for writing, producing and directing comedy-based films like Anchorman, Tammy, The Boss, often collaborating with actor and comedian Will Ferrell. Now a quick rewind, in 2015 The Big Short was released and ended up with five Oscar nominations and one win for McKay and his screenplay. The Big Short starred many famous names, including Christian Bale, who now returns in a new potential winner, Vice. In Vice, McKay gives us the mysterious story of Dick Cheney, the vice president to George W. Bush. With Bale again on the film and an interesting analysis of a part of US history, there are high chances of McKay being called again on stage on February 24th. But just as it happened with the acting category, while everybody was focusing on the big names that the recurring creators at film awards, a smaller name snuck its way up front. In this case, it's Pavel Pavlikovsky for his film Cold War. This movie covers a love story stretched across the 40s and 60s, the time during which the Cold War then peaked. So while everybody had been focusing on the huge and famous names, the positive reviews for Cold War had been silently pouring in. And this film didn't receive just one Oscar nomination, but three, along with dozens of other film awards. So although as the predictions are standing at the moment, it is rather unlikely for Pavel Pavlikovsky to win at the 2019 Oscars, just never say never. As this year the Academy seems to be on the lookout for new and interesting names in the cinema industry. A more favoured contender to the prize is Yorgos Lantimos for his superb historical film The Favourite. The Greek director is known for delivering artsy films that some have described as weird, such as The Lobster, where the characters have to fall in love or they will be transformed in animals or The Killing of the Sacred Deer, in which Colin Farrell and Nicole Kidman are stuck in a very old scenario. Regardless of these labels, Lantimos's films have always earned a huge success, and this year is no different, with a favourite portraying the eccentric life at the Palace of Queen Anne, where Rachel Weisz, Emma Stone and Olivia Colman enjoy mud baths, duck races, food fights, as well as real fights, secret love stories all spiralling into visually stunning images followed by a captivating storyline. This film is nominated for 10 Oscars and it will also likely win the Oscar for Best Actress and Best Picture. But there is one name that tied with the favourite for number of nominations, Roma, with its director Alfonso Juaron, who is always on top of the list of predictions as the winner of uh, the Best Director Award. Roma is the emotional story of a Mexican family during the 1970s. The members of this family, in particular the mother, are dealing with many personal issues issues, but they have the help of their housemaid Cleo, the protagonist of the story, who becomes another motherly figure to the whole family, while still having to deal with matters concerning her own life. Now Roma may not have drawn in crowds as other films on the list today, but Juaron's film really ticks all of the boxes for an Oscar winning film. In particular, as a director, he managed to oversee the mesmerising aesthetic of this film and integrate it with the cast's emotional acting and a storyline which suddenly and unexpectedly becomes very deep. So for now, all the arrows of victory seem to be pointed to Juaron, but up until February 24th, all the directors are still in the game. Who do you think will win the Oscar for Best Director? Let us know with a comment down below. See you soon. Bye.